off in an environment like a church culture, one thinks that to have a question is to put everything at risk. Uh, we tend to think too often, I think, of testimony as a package deal. To raise a question in one area is to throw into question uh, everything in the other. I think it may be useful in this regard to think of the, the compass, the kind of instrument that you use to draw circles, that one can have an absolutely fixed point, whereas the other arm swings free. I used to think that questions are bad. I've learned as I've grown closer to my Savior, the questions are welcome. And the more we dive deeper into some of the questions we have, we gain a stronger testimony of the gospel. The Apostle Hubie Brown and the great novelist Dostoevsky both talked about doubt as being a kind of apprenticeship on the way to faith. That's how I think of doubt and that's how I've experienced doubt. I had been having a lot of questions for quite a few years and had been dealing with that by sort of doing research online, reading books, but never really telling Aubrey what I was going through. When I experienced some sort of like shattering of my current understanding and didn't know what to do, that I would define this as a faith crisis and I would feel really bad about it. <laughs> I remember the exact words he said, I don't know if I have a testimony. And yeah, it was like the world stopped for a minute. And it can be really scary. It can feel terrible. It, it almost always feels terrible, actually. I couldn't imagine our life without the church, and that was my biggest fear. And that's what we wrestled with. I feel like I know what it is to have lost one's bearings, to have lost one's moorings, to no longer be able to say, I know. But there's always something after it. Comfort and ease and certainty were what we were looking for and we thought yeah. that we would find as people of real faith. But at the end of the day, it was discomfort and a real wrestle, like you said, that we think actually are the entire point. It's like the wrestle with the questions leads to true faith and the wrestle with people like in community leads to true belonging. We see in all these different kinds of experiences how the point is not getting fixed or not getting fixed. The point is to live in accordance with our divine nature and our capability and our kinship with each other. When B.H. Roberts invokes the phrase disciples of the second sort, I think he's making a couple of important points. One is that he's, he's recognizing the fact that hasn't really been emphasized in the church until the ministry of President Nelson, and that is that we have to think of restoration as a process. I think when I grew up in the church, when, whenever people talked about the restoration, it was always in the past tense. The restoration is a project that, that God is still working at in the world. President Nelson said that you know Jesus Christ will yet reveal some of his mightiest works in the days to come. So that's incredibly helpful when you're growing as a religious movement to have this kind of built-in institutional flexibility and responsiveness. I think we've come to actually believe in what we say we believe. If we believe in a God who is still living, still breathing, still speaking to us, and if we believe that we are part of this process, for me, that's, it's a lot more exciting. It's exhilarating. It's, it's liberating. The church, in a very real sense, acquires the, the, the texture and the shape and the nature of those individual entities that make it up. This idea of the body of Christ, it's a really comforting metaphor because it tells me I don't have to do everything, I don't have to be everything, I don't have to know everything. I'm part of creating this church that I want to belong to and I'm part of the restoration. I'm here with all of my wounds and all of my fears and, and all of my sensitivities and that's part of this church and they need me here. It is so incredibly valuable to have a group of people who are faithful to each other, who have covenanted to see each other as brothers and sisters. I think that's what Faith Matters is, is really trying to do on all of those different levels, is recognize everyone has different gifts. That's both institutionally and culturally and individually, and embracing the truth and beauty yeah. and goodness from all of those. What does God want you to do to bring your gifts, your talents, the things that make you you, to change the world, to make it a better place? You know, what if faith didn't look like a list of correct beliefs? That's how I had defined faith forever. And expression of faith can actually look like love. What is faith if it's not love manifesting 
um, longing and pulling us towards our origins and towards the things that that we know but but don't really know. We have to create spaces to talk about things that we're going through and that our children are going through and make it applicable to our everyday lives. Not that the gospel isn't, but we have to take that gospel and break it down to a personal level. And I love that about Faith Matters. How do we take this tradition that we love and that formed us as Christian disciples, and then how do we take that and apply it to the most urgent needs and questions of our day? To have an expansive vision of the gospel, it means to be open to contextualizing the gospel in new ways. And uh, I think it means to put into practice that revelation given to Joseph Smith that we need to be agents unto ourselves in finding ways to, to build and expand the reach of Zion. And uh, that's what I see the, the work of Faith Matters as uh, being engaged in.